Carrington Moss is not only a carbon sink that's been capturing carbon here since Neolithic times, it's also a critical defence against local flooding. It is clear that the climate emergency is having an effect on our weather patterns, and you may remember that Carrington Moss had extensive areas covered in flood water from October 19 to March 2020. Given the plans to develop on Carrington Moss, we set up a page on our website dedicated to what we have called Carrington Lake to share the images taken by our members and to raise awareness about the actual level of the water and the potential impact it could have on local residents. This year is no different. For several weeks now, significant levels of surface water has been visible on the moss. The ditches are filling up again, the fields are waterlogged and the footpaths have many, often huge, puddles. The ditch on the public footpath 16 is a good example of the speed and quantity of water flowing from the fields. The video was taken on two dates, three weeks apart. It was not raining on either occasion and the sound you can hear is the water flowing from the field into the ditch. The field itself, which is scheduled for both housing and the Carrington Relief Road in the new Carrington Master Plan, already has extensive areas of surface water flooding. Yesterday, a weather alert was issued for heavy rains, which Andrew Weston reported could result in flooding events in the sale area. The situation is not helped by the overzealous maintenance which has been carried out in the TPT, the Transpennine Trail. This has resulted in a huge loss to the biodiversity in the area. Large swathes of understory has been removed and many trees have been cut down, some of them young but others more mature. We do not know why this has been done. The route only needs to be wide enough for cyclists, walkers and horse riders. But it is our birds and wildlife that will suffer from this action, along with the reduced protection from the water issues that the trees provided. Sir James Bevan, the CEO of the Environment Agency, said back in February of last year that building new homes on floodplains should be resisted and that most people would accept that some homes should not have been built where they were. He went on to suggest techniques which could floodproof homes, including, wait for it, creating wetland habitats and planting trees. Hello, we actually have wetland habitat here and thousands of trees already. But the first is planned to be concreted over and the second are cut down on a whim. And for those who believe that experts will be developing the drainage strategy for the plans to build on Carrington Moss, do remember that experts designed the drainage strategy for the A555 Airport Relief Road and their estimates of the drainage requirements were woefully inaccurate. In addition, our neighbours in Manchester and Stockport are also planning a number of major development for their areas, which may require drainage into the River Mersey. So it is likely to get even higher in future and may not have the capacity to cope with the drainage from Carrington Moss as well. So where will all that water go? Well, the high water levels already impact Danewell Park and Danewell Woods, not just in one place, but all across the park and the woodlands. If the water ends up in our gardens, or worse still, in our houses, what are the implications? Well, we will already be suffering from increased air and noise pollution as a consequence of the new roads and the additional traffic in the area. But these high water levels could also bring water contamination, sanitation problems, other water-based health hazards, together with a number of potentially significant financial consequences. Will our insurance be impacted? What about the additional costs we may face 
for repairs and resolutions. Is Trafford ready to fund the remediation of these issues?